Hi guys, and welcome to the fifth video in the series on coding your very own DIY gaming console, BIT. In this video, we'll show you how to make an amazing game that the wacky robots named Fast Fast Food. In this game, your character will have to collect hamburgers and avoid projectiles. Let's kick things off. Click on the new sketch and type in Fast Fast Food. Once again, we can hide the code editor since we'll be using blocks. First, we'll need to create a couple of sprites. Click on the three dots located in the top right corner and select Sprite Editor from the drop-down menu. Now, click on the plus icon and put the following dimensions for your first sprite. 12 times 22 pixels. This will be our character when standing. Let's draw. Try to make your sprite similar to mine. When you're satisfied with your drawing, type in player standing as the name of your sprite and click on the save button. Now you can close this sprite and click on the sprite editor again to create another one. Set the dimensions for this new sprite to 12 times 12 pixels. This sprite will show our character crouching. When you're done with drawing, type in player crouching as the name of your sprite, save it and close the sprite editor. We're done with our character. Let's create a sprite for the hamburgers. The dimensions for this one will be 16 times 16 pixels. When you're satisfied with your drawing, type in burger as the name of your sprite, save it and close the sprite editor. Finally, let's draw a sprite for the projectiles that we'll need to avoid. Open the sprite editor again and set the dimensions for this new sprite to 10 times 6 pixels. When you're satisfied with your drawing, type in projectile as the name of your sprite, save it and close the sprite editor. Great, we're done with drawing our sprites. Let's move on to the variables we'll need to create for this game. We'll need 15 variables. Minimum height, this variable will be used to determine whether the player is touching the ground. Crouch, this variable will determine whether the player is crouching. Crouch difference that will determine the height difference between the player standing and player crouching sprites. Player position X and player position Y variables that will determine the position of the player. Player height, this one determines the height of the player. 
jump strength, jump velocity and gravity which will determine the movement of the player. Jump, this one will define whether the player is currently jumping. Projectile position X and projectile position Y that will determine the position of the projectile. Burger position X and burger position Y that will determine the position of the burger. And finally points to keep the score. Now let's define all of these variables. Set minimum height to 116. This variable won't change throughout the game, but we still need to define it. Set the crouch variable to false, as our character will be standing at the start of the game. Set the crouch difference variable to 12. This variable defines the height difference between the player standing and player crouching sprites, as we mentioned earlier. Set player position X to 10 and player position Y to 94, as that will be the starting position of the player. Set player height to 22, as this will be the height of your character. Set jump strength to 12, this will be the strength of your jump. Set jump velocity to 0, as your character will be touching the ground at the start of the game. Set gravity to 1. Set jump to false, as your character won't be jumping at the start of the game. Set the projectile position X and projectile position Y to 0, as that will be the starting position of the projectile. Set the burger position X and burger position Y to 0, as that will also be the starting position of the burger. Finally, set the points variable to 0, as we start the game with 0 points. Great, now let's create the functions. We'll use this first function to draw the background, so drop it into the drawing area and name it draw background. Put the fill frame width block inside and set the color to cyan, as that will be the color of the sky. Now put the draw filled rectangle block, which will represent the grass. Set the width to 128, height to 12, x to 0, y to 115, and color to green. Finally, let's write the points variable at coordinates x equals 5 and y equals 5 in black using the right block. We're done with this function. Now let's create another function for drawing our player. We'll name this function draw player. First, put the if do block inside and place the jump variable inside the if statement. When the jump variable is set to true, we need to check if the player is touching the ground because we don't want the player to be able to jump while still in the air. If the player is touching the ground, we want to set the jump velocity to jump strength, which means that the player will jump. To do that, put another if do block inside the do statement and set it up as shown here. Now we want the gravity to affect the player whenever it's not touching the ground. Put another if do block below and duplicate the blocks from the previous if statement. Adjust the comparison block as shown here and put the following blocks inside the do statement. Finally, let's draw the sprites. Place the if do else block below and put the crouch variable inside the if statement. Now put the draw sprite block from the display section inside the do statement. Select the player crouching sprite from the drop down menu and set the x and y coordinates as shown here. If the player is not crouching, we want it to be displayed as standing, so put the following blocks inside the else statement.
We're done with this function. Let's go to the next one. This function will be used to determine the player's position. So let's call it player position. Put the if do block inside it. Now we want the left button to move our character to the left. Place the button state block inside the if statement and select the left button from the drop down menu. We also need to check if the character is able to move to the left, meaning that it's not too close to the left edge of the screen. To do that, place another if do block inside the do statement and set it up as shown here. Now we want the right button to move our character to the right. We can simply duplicate the blocks for the left button and adjust them as shown here. Now let's define the vertical position of the player. Place another if do else block. You can duplicate this if statement from the draw player function and adjust it. Inside the do statement, set the player position y variable to player position y minus jump velocity. This will change the player position during the jump. Finally, set the jump velocity to 0 and player position y to 94 inside the else statement. This will define the player's position on the ground. Amazing, we're done with this function. Now let's draw the projectiles that we'll need to avoid. Create another function and name it draw projectile. Put an if do else block inside and place the comparison block inside the if statement. Set it up as shown here. If the x coordinate of the projectile is lower or equal to minus 12, it means that the player was able to avoid it, which means that we'll need to respawn it on the other side of the screen. We also wanted to have a randomly generated position on the y-axis, so put the following blocks inside the do statement to achieve that. Inside the else statement, we want to define its movement. It will be moving horizontally towards the player. Let's also draw the projectile sprite. So place the draw sprite block below and adjust it as shown here. We're done with this function, now let's draw the burgers. Create another function and name it draw burger. Since the burger will be moving similarly to the projectiles, you can simply duplicate the blocks from the draw projectile function. Place them inside this one and adjust them as shown here. Let's create the next function. We'll name it eat food and this function will determine what happens when the player touches a burger. The goal of the game is to collect as many burgers as you can before touching a projectile. So each time you collect a burger, your score will need to increase by one. We also want to respawn the burger since this one has already been collected. To do that, add the following blocks. Great, now let's create a function that will respawn the player. This one will be triggered when the player touches a projectile. Name it respawn player. We 
also want to respawn the projectile and set the point variables to zero. So add the following blocks. Amazing! Now let's create the last function and name it collision detection. This function will be used to detect collisions between the player and burgers and collisions between the player and projectiles. Put the if do block inside and place the following blocks inside the if statement. Now place another if do block inside the do statement of this one. Click on the little gear icon to adjust it as shown here and put the following blocks inside the if statement. You can duplicate these blocks, place them inside the else if statement and adjust them as shown here. These if and else if statements are defined so that they check if the player is touching the burger. The first if statement checks their position on the x axis and the second if statement checks their position on the y axis if the player is standing. And finally, the else if statement checks their position on the y axis when the player is crouching. If the player is touching the burger, we want it to trigger the eat food function. So place this block inside both of these two statements. Now let's repeat the same process for the projectile. You can simply duplicate these blocks and adjust them as shown here. Don't forget to trigger the respawn player function inside this set of blocks instead of the eat food function. Great, we're done with the functions. Let's move on to the inputs. We want our character to jump when we click on the A button. Put the when button pressed and when button released blocks and select the A button from the drop down menu. Set the jump variable to true when the button is pressed and to false when it's released. We also want our character to crouch while we're holding the B button. Repeat the same process for the B button, but change the jump variable to crouch.
Finally, let's trigger these other six functions inside the loop forever block. Don't forget to include the scan buttons, push frame and sleep 5 milliseconds blocks to ensure proper code execution. Well done, you're done with coding! Click on the Run button in the top right corner and upload the code to your device. Try pressing the A and B buttons to make your character jump and crouch. Use these buttons along with the left and right buttons to avoid the projectiles and collect the hamburgers. How many points can you collect before you touch a projectile? Well done, you programmed a new game onto your device. If you want to put the stock firmware back onto your device, you can simply go here and click on the Restore Firmware button. 